Hey guys, uh, it's been a while since I made a video, but uh, today we're going to be talking about collision detection. And uh, we're mainly going to be talking about the concept of separating axis theorem. There might be something I want to talk about in the future, but that's probably going to be another video. Um, we're also mainly going to be talking in 2D space. Now, I might move into 3D space if we're running on good time by the end of this video, but we'll see when we get there. So, collision detection, and more importantly, separating axis theorem. What are, what are we doing here? So let's say we have two shapes. So we have two boxes here, because that's what we tend to work with in terms of GUI. We have two boxes, and they can be any shape and rotation and size or whatever. And I've talked in the past about getting the corners of these shapes, which is essential. So you can either go ahead and read the wiki, or you can go watch an older video um, in which I talk about that. And so the idea behind separating axis theorem, which we call SAT for short, it's all about projections. So let's review projections here. We've talked about this before in terms of the dot product, but a projection is when you have two vectors, so we have a vector like this, and we have a vector like this. We'll say this is A, and this is B. And the projection of A onto B is this right triangle created here. So if we draw a little right triangle here, the projection is this length, the base so to speak, of this right triangle. And if we were to do the projection of B onto A, well then we'd imaginarily, is that a word, imaginarily? I don't know. We'd extend that uh, A vector. You know, it doesn't actually extend, but for the purpose of visualization, we're going to say it extends. And we draw, once again, the right triangle from B. And in terms of the projection of B onto A, it's this. It's this base, right? And that's also the projection. So separating axis theorem is all about projections. And we know how to do them with the dot product because we, if we were to know the angle between these, right, then it's just, if this is a right triangle, then we know from Sakatoa, Sakatoa, right, that we are doing adjacent and hypotenuse. Because we have, uh, for example, doing this base here, we have the magnitude of A. So we have this length here which is the magnitude of A, and uh, that means that we have the hypotenuse in this case, and we want this base here, which is the adjacent, so that means that cosine theta is equal to the base, or more or less the projection, over the magnitude of A, in which we can rearrange that very simply as the magnitude of A times a cosine of theta, is equal to the base. And then we might not always have that angle, of course, and that's why the dot product comes into play, because we know that dot is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B uh, times cosine of theta, and we don't actually need to have this cosine of theta to do that. We've, we've learned all about this before in the dot product video, or if you read the wiki article, um, you should know this. So it's just as simple as dividing the dot by either one of the magnitudes, depending on which projection uh, you want. So in terms of doing collision detection here, the idea, and let's pretend we have, and I'll switch up my color momentarily here, let's pretend we're, these are our axis aligned uh, grid, more or less, right? So this is your standard Y axis and your standard X axis. So uh, I know that this this guy over here isn't drawn perfectly straight, but let's pretend that this has no rotation. So this is perfectly aligned. This is an axis aligned box. So that means we're going to have to check two of its axis, and we'll talk about where we get its axis from in a second, but let's let's just understand what it is. So we have two axes here, and uh, as I said, we'll talk about where we get these in a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the corners of each of these shapes, and we're going to project them onto both of these axes. So we're going to get a projection down here, and it's going to give us some scalar point down here. And we're going to get a point down here. Some scalar point down here, point down here, yada yada. Da, da, da. And we got to do this for all four corners on both shapes, on both axes. But we're going to stick to this one for now. Okay. And this one, this one over here, this top corner is the same as this bottom corner. So same here. So these go down as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, circle out the the maximum and the minimum of each shape. So this here, this is the maximum, this corner projected down here is the maximum length in this direction, right? So we'll say here is a max, and this corner here is the min of that this shape here projected in 
this direction. So we'll get these two points, and we don't really care about these other points, so we can scratch those out or not draw them to begin with. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to say this point here is projected here, and this point here is projected here. So we've got max, max, uh, min, and max. And with these maxes and these maxes and these mins, or mins, uh, depending on each shape, of course, in code form, we'd organize this a little better. We can actually do some comparison because we can say, okay, well, these these shadows, more or less, if you want to imagine a flashlight being up here is being casted, these shadows seem to imply that these two shapes are colliding. We can obviously see that they're not, but that's why we test multiple axes, and we'll see see that in a second here. But we can clearly see that in this case, it looks like it's colliding. So we'll say okay it looks like it's colliding so far but we're not done our check we need to check the rest of the axes first so let's draw a flashlight here this is our pretend flashlight and it's shining light like this onto this axis right so once again we do the same thing we uh, draw out all our points and let me see if I can find a good color for that so we'll just draw the maxes and the mins this time right so that's this is the min this is the max this is the min, and this here is the max. And we can see, well, it's a little hard to draw, but there's a gap right there, right? There's a gap between these two shapes and the shadows that's created by that flashlight. And we can say that as long as there is a gap, as long, long as there is a gap, there's a gap we know that there isn't collision. Collision. And so it's a pretty simple test to do, right? As we just talked about, we just project the different corners onto the axis. So the real question is, well, how do we get the axis? What axis do we project on? Because it seemed like I really, well, it might not seem like I pulled these out of thin air, but if you think about two rotated shapes, and I guess we can do another example, but you know, if we had uh, a shape like this, uh, maybe a bit long that goes up here, like that, well, we can still see that there's a gap there, but if we still use these same things, right, we now have collision here, and there clearly isn't. So we, there's more axis that we have to test to fully get this true-to-life thing. So the question becomes, as I said, what axis do we test? And in 2D, the answer is simple. In 2D, the answer is simple. So if we have multiple boxes, we're taking the unique normals. So what do I mean by unique normals? Well, if I, let's say if we look at this axis align box, well, we know that this and this are basically the same thing, except this is a negative version and this is the positive version, right? So when I say unique, I mean something that isn't the negative or positive version of the same vector. So in terms of axis that we have to test, all we have to do is pick the normals, the unique normals of each box, right? And if we do that, if we truly did test all those axes, so we have one down like that, one like that, uh, and then we have our normal axis align boxes, or because we have this box up here that's not rotated, and we can do two rotated shapes if we want to, but if we do project all these onto it and we compare those maxes and mins, then uh, we will eventually find a gap. But if we do check all axes, if we check every single axis, if we check every axis, and there's no collision, or, and there is, sorry, and there is collision, I shouldn't say no collision, sorry, and uh, there is collision, or the shadows overlap, there, let's say, is overlap on all of them, then there is guaranteed to be collision. Is collision. Now one more cool thing though that we can do with this is if we know, so I'll draw two that are in fact colliding, guaranteed. Uh, let's do two rotated shapes. So that's uh, not very straight, is it? That's the best we're going to get. So we have two shapes like this. Well I know I can just tell looking at it that the axis of collision is this. It's this surface normal here. And I can tell because I know this depth here, right, and I know this corner here. 
I can see that this is the minimum penetration depth, or I don't like the word penetration, um, so I like to call it minimum translation vector. Minimum translation, or sorry, I kind of spoiled some stuff. Translation. So that's what we're going to call it. And because we know the axis, because we know this axis, we know where this penetration or translation takes place, we can multiply this scalar value by this axis and get an ax or a vector returning with the proper length, magnitude, direction, whatever you want to call it, to move these two shapes out of collision. And, we, and as I said, we li I like to call this the minimum translation vector, just MTV for short. Um, so let's hop into studio and apply this stuff and see how it goes. Okay, so we're in studio now. Uh, before we do anything, let's go over the code. Uh, so we've got a dot function, the axis, which is just taking the corners, which happen to align with the edges uh, to get the surface normals of the 2D shapes. Uh, we've got a function for getting the rotated corners, and then here we are, the main meet, the collision detection function. So we get the corners, we get the axis, and then we test the axis. So we project onto each axis here, right? So there's a total of four corners per thing, we project each axis. And we don't have to divide uh, by one because the axis is unit vectors here, right? So there's no point division by one to get a projection is redundant, so the dot product in this case is the projection. We're then getting the max and the mins, uh, and then we're doing some checks. So we know, as we said before, if there's no collision, then we're 100% sure that uh, we're not colliding. So if there's no collision on the shadows, we instantly know that the two shapes aren't colliding, so we return false as collision, and we provide a empty uh, minimum translation vector. Uh, now if there is collision, we uh, potentially add that minimum translation vector to our table of MTVs and then at the end, so assuming we get through all these axes and there, you know, none of, none of the axes had collision or had no collision on them, uh, we're going to sort through the minimum translation vectors, find the shortest one because we want the minimum amount that we have to move out. We don't necessarily want the uh, a random minimum translation vector because that could be anything and then we return true because there was collision and the minimum minimum translation vector. So just going down here, we're doing some rotation just to show you that it does work with rotation. We get the boolean that says if it collides or not, and we get the minimum translation vector. Now, of course, if you wanted to, I could do something like change the color and what have you, but I'm not doing that. I'm just showing you basically the MTV in action. So let's check it out. <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so yeah, we can just drag this around, and when we do so, it uh, pushes the other one. That's the minimum translation. Uh, vector in action and if I try and drag this one uh, it just like stops um, so that's pretty neat um, and you can pretty do some pretty cool stuff with it I've done 2d platformers and what have you with it and it's just a useful thing to know especially if you're working in two dimensions um, so that's pretty much all we have to show today um, maybe in the future I will talk about separating axis theorem in three dimensions uh, and probably a few other algorithm, algorithms, at least one other one that you can use in 2D and 3D because I think they're good uh, practice and they make you think, um, think mathematically and they're pretty interesting. Anyway, so that's all for today. Thanks for watching and as always, hope you learned something new.